most important thing when you start off your whole page you want to think about your whole page so if you're going to draw a head you don't want to draw a head this big okay you and and what you you really don't want to draw it this big okay so remember right off the bat you want to draw the head which is going to basically be what most of the face is going to come out of at least to scale of an actual face and head okay so you again you're trying to use the whole page okay it's really 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 important that you think about using the whole page so you're going to have the neck like this and you're going to have like just some sense of like the shoulder line but the scale of the head needs to be at least this big so avoid it getting that big and really avoid it getting so small that there's so much negative space that it looks like a little ventriloquist doll head just avoid that at all costs so again make sure that the whole head is at least this big once you have what you feel is going to be pretty much a nice size scale for the face and the head then what you want to do is you want to draw remember you're using your vine charcoal you want to very lightly draw out a center access line that's going to symmetrically evenly balance out the two sides of what will be the face and the head okay and then what you want to do is looking at your photograph you want to try to find where you think the line for the eyebrows okay and then preferably you can kind of take out the scale and where you think the, where the eyes are probably going to be and then you want to try to find the line for where the nose would be and then for the mouth okay so you want to divide your you're deconstructing the structure of the facial components okay and you have to do this first you, again at all costs don't just start drawing the eyes and the nose you you want to you really want to find all your proportions right off the bat okay and then you're going to have approximation for where the bottom of where the chin line is okay and then after that then you're going to want to start doing planar deconstruction with their, which are just basically the planes and the structure of the face so all I'm doing is I'm just starting to take out where I think the components, the, the facial components are. So I'm just lightly drawing out. And I'm, again, I'm treating everything as big shapes. I'm not trying to get like carried away with any kind of detail whatsoever. Because if my proportions are not right and I start doing detail, then it won't matter. It, it, it'll be kind of like defeating the whole purpose of like trying to find the face. Okay, so again, doing the cheek lines. Now I'm gonna start bringing in where I think the jaw line is. Okay, now I know I'm not working from a photograph on this, but I'm more concerned that you deconstruct what you're working from in this, what, it, you know, what, what I was saying before at the beginning of class, what's called planar deconstruction, where you're trying to take out all the planes that are occurring and that basically show the anatomy of a face. Okay, so just I'm basically I'm doing what, what might be the ears here. I'm doing like basically a hairline. Okay, and then I'm doing the shape of the head. And I'm just, I'm going back and I'm checking all my proportions as I'm knocking everything out. So in the, in the, in the, the process of doing this, you need to keep looking back at your proportions, depending on what image you're working from. Does the person have a longer nose? Do they have a wider nose? Do they have larger eyes? Do they have smaller eyes? Do they have a big chin? You know, do they have a broader face? Do they have a, you know, a more, um, you know, what's the jawline look like? Um, so once you start nailing out once you get all the construction down remember you have to start with an access line you have to find the lines and the proportions for where the eyes are where the bottom of the nose bridge is where you approximate the mouth is where the chin and the mandible line is for the mandible bone and then 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 after you do that then 
you can start bringing in and taking out some of the attributes to start showing like again you know where the eye what's happening with the eyelids okay and the rule with eyes like I was going over before in class is just remember the eyeball is in the eye socket and the eyelids are holding the eyeball in the eye socket okay so you don't again you don't want to draw them flat okay and then if I have the so you draw the ball of the nose like this. The nostrils are, are on either side like this. Okay. Here. Okay, so I'm basically, all I'm, I'm not doing any kind of detail yet. I'm just trying to figure out like where everything is. Okay. Remember, everything has width and, 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 and depth to it. So you don't want to draw anything flat. You want to really try to find what's occurring um, with showing, um, you know, the whole construction of the face, okay? And you just, you're building it out slowly and surely as you can, okay? Like so. Okay, so you really need to think about how you, how you have the anatomical attributes that are informing the structure of the entirety of the anatomy of the face, depending on what you're working from. And you have to build it up like that. It, it, one of the worst things you can do when you're doing figurative drawing, especially like facial attributes, is again what I said to it in the beginning of class, avoid at all costs starting with the eyes. Because people get drawn into that and they immediately want to draw that. And that's, that's I, I, like could not be more wrong to do it that way, because inevitably, <laughs> your proportions will be off and then you'll get like really extremely frustrated. So you want to make sure when you're, when you're trying to figure out the tonal range in the face, remember you're, tr you're trying to avoid anything where you're, where you're outlining. Okay. Just at all costs. Like, cause there's just, there's no, there's actually no lines in the face at all. You, you, anything that you're defining, like for the, for the, for the bridge line of the nose, you're going to do that with value, okay? And depending on what's happening with the shadows and stuff like that, that's gonna determine how much, how much definition you're gonna show. But what, whatever you do, no matter what, and that's the same thing with right, right on the top of the bridge line of the nose, you're not, do not draw lines. You, you're trying to do everything with value, okay? So if this ends up having to be like lighter, then you just come back down here like this and you take out lighter part of the of the of the bridge line so again just like when you were doing the eggs you can soften up that edge it will it'll still imply that the nose line if you want to even go like a little if you want to go back and add more that's fine you just want to avoid any kind of any kind of uh line to define it because remember the, the minute that you start doing any kind of line it it will inevitably look flat you, you're basically you'll be flattening it out okay so again, just value. And so when you're laying down your vine charcoal, you just basically, same thing with the chin line, I'm not gonna outline it, I'm gonna define it. Um, just like when you did the eggs, you're gonna bring out the dimension by using value to bring it out, okay? Um, same thing with, with your eyelids and stuff like that. They're gonna get defined with value, okay? Value, not lines, okay? Same thing with with anything that's happening in the cheek line, okay? Depending on the jaw line and how, how you know, what kind of jaw line um, the images that you're working from, you're gonna do that with value. Um, when you do hair, you wanna treat the hair as one shape of value, whether it's light, lighter or darker, and you bring it out as one shape. What you wanna avoid is draw little tiny lines for each hair. If you wanna to try to get a sense of someone's hair like that, then all you have to do is go back, lay down the full, treat the whole shape of the hair as one value, and then go back and you can start taking out areas that are either lighter, okay, or darker. But you don't, you, you don't, if you draw every single hair, again, the hair will look, it'll look flatter. There's gonna be parts of someone's hair, whether they're blonde or they're dark or whatever, that are gonna be lighter and darker or whatever. Um, but the most important thing is when you, to get your tonal range, use your vine charcoal, 
go back through, you can take out detail, start trying to bring out all the dimensional aspects of the eyes and the nose um, and the mouth. Um, and then just really try, <clears throat> you know, to define what you're seeing. And inevitably, you'll, you, you, the image that you're working from should start becoming a lot more dimensional.